Hello, peoples. Welcome to T-Shirt Tuesday, one of my faves. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a um, Steve Bannon war room thing. I couldn't find any ID on it, but I'm pretty sure it came from some of his swag. Take down the Chinese Communist Party. Big fan of doing that, and we should be doing that. What we shouldn't be doing is having... The guy who was installed as president, and he still thinks he is, we shouldn't have Joe Biden's son and his brothers and everybody getting along swimmingly with communist China, like Hillary and Obama, and some of the Bushes, and the Clintons, and Mitch McConnell. We shouldn't have that. We should be taking them down. Because if you go across the globe and you look at every single ideology, and you look at every single country, powerful country that has written down their intentions, <clears throat> communist China has done it for quite some time. So it's uh, Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. Very quickly before I go on, let me let me describe this. Where is it? Uh, yeah, this is part of the graphics package. My arms are part of the Ken Matthews Report graphics package. This here um, is a toilet. It is a toilet. Uh, it's a little hot because of the light. Can we? No, I don't think. I don't want to knock down that light because we set it up. So this is a toilet. It's a coffee cup. This is pretty cool. And I bought this because I'm a smart ass and because for as much serious content as we embrace on this show, and we continue our search for the truth, you got to laugh or your head's just going to explode. Gosh, this is, gosh, it's been a while since this toilet was cleaned in my hand. It's got a lot of dust in it. So remember when Alexander Ocasio-Cortez went down to the border and auditioned to be an actress? And she said um, that illegal foreign nationals or is she called dreamers? They're drinking out of toilets. Well, that was a lie. That was a lie. Now, the reason people can get away with saying it is because in certain lockup environments or confinement situations, the water all goes to one place. So it usually goes to a structure where the water feeds a toilet so it has the ability to flush, okay? So the toilets didn't look like this. So when she said people were drinking out of a toilet, what I did is I bought this and then I did a video where I filled it with blue power aid or power drink or whatever that's called. Maybe Gatorade, does Gatorade make a blue product? And it looked like toilet cleaner in a toilet. So I thought it would be fun because I am a smart ass. Uh, I thought it would be cool to drink out of a toilet like I'm not doing it now. I'm, I'm drinking out of my normal big honking coffee cup now. So anyway, that's what that is. But what it is, it it looks like a big cabinet. And at the bottom, the seat of the cabinet is a toilet. And then the top of the cabinet, we could say this. Imagine if this was higher to about here. And this is where you where you washed your hands. There would be a sink up top. So that saves space and it saves plumbing cost because it's all one spot, right? Okay, that's where that came about. Well, I saw it too. They were drinking out of the toilet, said Senator Dumbass. No, they weren't drinking out of a toilet. They were drinking out of a sink, which happened to be connected to a toilet. And I would think, um, not to get all realistic on you, especially for you leftist folks, I would think having a toilet and running water and being safe would be a step up from being poor south of the border. But again, let's get right into it. We have a lot to cover today. Thanks for uh, joining me on the Ken Matthews Report, subscribestar.com. Thank you again. Over the weekend, we got a, a teeny little spike in subscriptions. It It is baby steps, but it's growing. We now have at least one subscriber in 49 states. Now, in some states, there's many more than that. But my goal was to get at least one in every state. 
And if we can just get Hawaii. You know, I was talking to my mom yesterday and she said, oh, that one person I that one person I knew from Hawaii, I, I, I don't know if they're still alive. And see, that's that's the problem. If if your 83 year old mom is reaching out to get some new subscribers around the country, because like myself, my parents have lived in different places. Uh, you hope they're going to be alive. So that's where we want living biological males and females that love the country, seek the truth, and don't buy the narrative. So that's who we're looking for. We're looking for more of those. And ideally, and I know I don't usually put this at the front of the report, but everybody tells me you should you should ask for subscribers at the beginning and then if they like the report they'll subscribe if they're seeing it for the first time or whatever this again how long have we been doing this now Let's see fourth fifth 10 coming up on 10 weeks isn't it hard to believe that the midterm election that may never happen is five weeks away hmm Okay, so the goal is, on if you're just tuning in, T-Shirt Tuesday, the goal is at least 100 subscribers in every state of America. So that's the goal. But you got to you start small. You start small. I mean, I never knew we'd have one subscriber in 49 out of 50 states at this point. So. So if you can just tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, we'll be there in no time. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. You know, I uh, I just want to find something that gives us a flavor of where we are now. And it's interesting what I notice, because I, like many of you, are 50 plus. Uh, and I'm comfortably, well, I'm no, I'm, I'm older than 50 plus. But anyway, when you look back at the 70s and 80s, and I've been going through sound bites and, and books, and I have a lot of books from the 70s and 80s that I kept. It's amazing how many people either predicted where we are now or projected where we are now. See, I keep meeting these people. I mean, uh, just a few days ago, I met this man whom I greatly admire. He's a Swedish physicist, Gustav Bjornstrand. And he told me that he no longer watches television, he doesn't read newspapers, and he doesn't read magazines. He's completely cut them out of his life because he really does feel that we're living in some kind of Orwellian nightmare now. And that everything that you hear now contributes to turning you into a robot. When I was at Finhorn, I met this extraordinary English tree expert who had devoted his life to saving trees. He just got back from Washington, lobbying to save the Redwoods. He's 84 years old. He always travels with a backpack. He never knows where he's going to be tomorrow. And when I met him at Finhorn, he said to me, where are you from? And I said, New York. He said, hi, New York. Yes, that's a very interesting place. Do you know a lot of New Yorkers who keep talking about the fact that they want to leave but never do? And I said, oh, yes. And he said, why do you think they don't leave? I gave him different banal theories. He said, oh, I don't think it's that way at all. He said, I think that New York is the new model for the new concentration camp, where the camp has been built by the inmates themselves, and the inmates are the guards, and they have this pride in this thing they built. They built their own prison, and so they exist in a state of schizophrenia, where they are both guards and prisoners, and as a result, they no longer have, having been lobotomized, the capacity to leave the prison they've made, or to even see it as a prison. Wow. I... Ah. It just, that is such good stuff. And and the point is, people have been incorporating what I believe is the truth. At some, at, at some level, everything they just said in that film is the truth. It is the truth. And it's so funny because I have friends in New York. And I've worked in New York. And, and it's like this in a lot of big cities. They'll complain they're never going to leave. They're never going to leave. They are captured. They're captured. They'll, they'll bitch. Oh, rent's 4,200 a month now. 
why don't you just move out, you know, move out to the burbs or live in New Jersey or live across the river, live in Connecticut, live in, live in Pennsylvania. It's only a night. I mean, it's only a 90 minute. It, it's actually less than that. It's about a one hour commute from the Pennsylvania, New Jersey border. And that makes all the difference because if you live, if you live on the New Jersey PA border, if you live in PA, you have second amendment rights. There are still numerous conservatives here fighting to hold ground in Pennsylvania, but New Jersey is really no different than New York, but it's only an hour commute. And when you look at people that will say, oh, so on the, I was, I was on the road for an hour and a half today to get to work. Well, that same commute from New York, if you work in Midtown, that could put you in a free state. And at the moment, Pennsylvania is a free state. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. But the more research I do, because I'm trying to research more on Fauci and, and some of these other clowns that have really screwed things up for us. And in the process, I do a lot of research on not only position statements and history, both criminal and social, of people still in power. And it's amazing that both the Republicans and the Democrats have no problem recycling the same dangerous people over and over and over and over. Fauci's a great example. St. Anthony of the Deception. Anthony Fauci, great example. They just keep the same people in place if they're willing to play along. Henry Kissinger, one of the most dangerous people out there, still in the game, still advising Joe Biden, who's rolling up on 80 years old. You just go back one decade, two decades, three, four, five, and in film and news reports and culture and in books, you see exactly what's happening now. What's so scary about it is a lot of it has been predicted. Not only by people that do research like yourself or my, me, but it was predicted in film. And people that want to hurt you, they telegraph it. They telegraph it. I don't know how many times we can pound it into the ground that there was a complete real life, not real life, but uh, real, real world is what it was called. A real world drill of COVID-19 in October of 2019. And I can't believe people still deny that. All you have to do is go online and watch it. And they go through everything. They say, well, what if people don't believe it? Well, here's what we need to say in the media. What if people go on social media and start questioning our guidance and suggestions? And they have a whole list of what they do. We need to isolate them, call them quacks, deplatform them. They ran through all of this. You tell that to someone who's mind controlled, they think you're crazy. Here's that article I had yesterday, and then I want to get to some more sound bites. Uh, major scientific publisher has retracted over 500 papers. One of the world's largest open access journal publishers is retracting over 500 papers based on the discovery of unethical actions. Okay, this particular uh, journal publisher is in London. And they publish over 200 peer reviews, peer reviewed, excuse me, journals across multiple disciplines. They say now its research team in June identified, that's June of this year. When did I tell you the truth would start coming out on COVID? right before the election or the summer before the election. And it'll be too late then. It'll be too late to turn the ship around. All the truth is starting to come out now about the vaccine, about COVID, about the lies, about the hospitals, about the collusion between big pharma and the government and the hospitals and other contractors. It's all coming out now. If this, this screams it because what do we hear more and more? We hear this garbage, especially on panels and people trying to get you to move in a different direction and violate your constitutional rights medically. Well, this is peer reviewed. Well, here's 500. Let me jump over here for a minute. Make sure I can get it to show you. 500 papers, 500. 
This is not, well, they made a mistake in that one trial and the, the control group was a little off. No, it's 500. That's one publisher of studies and journals. What you're going to find in the next month to three is most of what you've heard about the vaccine, about COVID, about the election, about January 6th, about the FBI, garbage. And I'm telling you, it's, I think it's going to make Christmas a little glum, not to be a downer on Jesus's birthday, but I think, I think that crowd at the Christmas dinner with all the family, the ones that still have I'm with her bumper stickers on their Priuses, I think it's going to be sad for them. Hmm. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Da, 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 da. Okay. So uh, I hate to ruin your meal if you are eating, you know, lunch or dinner or maybe even breakfast. I don't know when you eat, but this may ruin your meal. But it's very interesting because this is The View. Uh, this is the panel of idiots. But they have a legitimate journalist on from the New York Times, Maggie Haberman, I believe. Uh and I just want you to listen to this dialogue because this is how things are starting to shape up. Do you think Trump really will run again and can he win again? And tell, tell, me, tell me about how he's feeling about Ron DeSantis because I love his tea. And so privately, he's... So she, the big orange lady, she, it's funny because she is a big orange lady, isn't she? Yeah, she kind of, she loves Ron DeSantis. And I, I always forget her name. Uh, she, she's ridiculous in some of her comments. I forget her name, sorry. But that is a nice top. So she thinks because she likes Ron DeSantis, she has all this credibility as being objective. But the only reason the left pretends to like DeSantis is because their hatred, their hatred for Trump is so severe that they'll like anybody. It's the same reason the left said, the left was like, oh, I really appreciate what Mitt Romney said. I really appreciate what Lindsey Graham said. This is the game. No one, no one on the left in their right mind, no communist, no socialist, no uh, collectivist is going to like Ron DeSantis because he is hardcore conservative. But if it makes it look like they're hurting Trump, they're all in. So this is going to be an interesting dynamic. Wait, how he sounds, you know, the heat Santa's in the manner he is. Privately, he is. So she, she's claiming that privately, um, and it wouldn't surprise me if this is happening, because there's so many people still, still now, today, around Donald Trump that are sellouts. And the fact that he doesn't know it worries me. Somebody asked me the other day, what, do you think Donald Trump is perfect? Hell no. I think Donald Trump in his first term made some of the dumbest mistakes humanly possible because he's a newbie at, he was a newbie at running a country. One of the reasons he makes dumb mistakes is because he's advised by selfish people and manipulative, pe manipulative people. And then let's say Donald Trump hires somebody. He's too stubborn. He waits until they've totally slapped him around. And to, like Jared Kushner is a great example. I mean, Jared Kushner threw President Donald Trump under the bus once a month. That was one of the worst hires in history. But anyway, let's see what she has to say. He's been attacking Ron DeSantis in the manner you just described. His weight, how he sounds, you know, that he's a phony. That's a, a big one of Donald Trump's about a number of people. He is really focused on Ron DeSantis in a way that he isn't on almost anybody else because he knows not just that Ron DeSantis is seen by people like us or others, you know, who look at the political field as the person who can take on Trumpism without the erratic behavior. So there it is. They just gave away their whole reason for even talking about Governor DeSantis. You know, they, these, this, these same people have called, not all of them, but these, this same group of people have called Ron DeSantis a Nazi and fascist and anti-woman and racist and Islamophobe and immigration phobe and phobe, phobe, phobe. But now all of a sudden, 
polls show that Ron could take on Trump if he wanted to. So now this is something else Donald Trump would have to contend with, but this is standard fare. His own party has always sold him out because the GOP, the leadership of the GOP are mostly gutless establishment people. So, but isn't it interesting to see people on The View saying, oh yeah, I like Ron DeSantis. Me too. High five. Ron's doing a great job. The hate mail they must get over this from the, the pro-abortion people and, and the pro-trans people because Ron DeSantis is pro-life and he doesn't want all that trans garbage being taught in middle schools. So the, you're going to see uh, up become down and left become right. It's going to get all crazy. And the reason it's going to get this crazy if we make it past the midterms, politically, if we make it past the midterms, it's going to get crazy because everybody's terrified of Trump coming back in and further exposing the incompetence that he started to expose back in 2017. But donors really like Ron DeSantis, and he has raised a lot. There it is. There it is. Donors like Ron DeSantis. And you know who follows donors? Every sellout you can find follows donors. So here we are on The View, which is a complete sewer. It's like angry high school girls. Not Maggie, but the other ones. She's a guest. You know who really likes Ron DeSantis? The money people. And who follows the money? Most political prostitutes in Washington follow the money. That's why the Mitch McConnell's and the Mitt Romney, well, not really Mitt Romney because he doesn't need it. But a lot of people on the Republican side are all bluster and conservatism and MAGA. And then they get a call from a donor and they change their tune. A lot of money at a time when Donald Trump's fundraising has slowed down and that is very concerning. And if he runs in 2024, who do you, because obviously it's not going to be Mike Pence. So who do you think he would look at as a possible running mate? There's been a couple of people whose names. <laughs> What's funny because this fool, uh, Whoopi Cushion, Whoopi Cushion says she mumbled Ron DeSantis. But that, you know, that is a dream ticket for a lot of conservatives. Personally, I don't want Ron DeSantis to run for president until 28. I think he's too valuable as a governor. He has the flexibility. He has, you know, he can he can move around. He can help support people. He could also, keep this in mind, Ron DeSantis could be brought onto a uh, committee or, or, you know, be an advisor. I just think he's very valuable in Florida. Florida is a stronghold for the country. And it really is a great example of how someone who's America first runs a state. And I worry that if Ron DeSantis does get to the federal level or leave his current position, that Florida is going to go by the wayside. It's going to get another rhino. And that's when states start turning to crap when they get rhinos, because rhinos are just Democrats. Okay. There's a couple There's a couple of people whose names have been mentioned. The one that actually gets mentioned the most by people close to him is Tim Scott from South Carolina, the senator. And then Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is possibly the next governor of Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to pause that. It just, it just came up out of my system. It's like crazy. You know, I'm, I'm chuckling for many reasons, but... One is that we get to hold on to Maggie Hay. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> so, Whoopi Cushion, just like Chuckles the Clown. Um, all right, let's jump over here, because this is what's happening in New York, and we knew this for a while. We knew this would happen. A uh, woman who was just a few months from retirement, she was FDNY, I believe she was an EMT, uh, she was stabbed to death in a random attack. Random attacks are becoming the big thing. Listen carefully. You'll hear about last Tuesday. Uh, the police representative mentions that last Tuesday there were 16 shootings. Uh, just do the math on that for a year. What's going on in New York City? Logan Malkin with the Fraternal Order of Police. Your reaction to this? When does everyone stand up and say enough? 
You know, Liz, this is absolutely heartbreaking. This 25-year veteran at the FDNY was viciously murdered for no reason whatsoever. She was a responder to 9-11. She was a pillar in her community. She deserved better from the leadership of New York City. And the citizens deserve better because this is on the heels of 16 people being shot in one day on Tuesday. And this crime and disorder that we're seeing in New York and other urban communities, it's only getting worse. We as a society need to stand up and say, we are not going to take this anymore. And we need to let our politicians know this is unacceptable because they're sure as hell not going to step up and do it. So the way we do that is by electing law and order candidates. We need to fund our police department. Okay, we get all that law, law and order candidates. I get all, good luck finding them. Good luck finding them in New York because they're not going to look. The New York is so messed up politically ideology it's a corrupt it's turning into a corrupt sewer and the damage done by Cuomo and Hochul and Adams the mayor uh which I still don't I can't even believe and I, I know it's true but I can't believe he's a former cop but New York just like Los Angeles just like most major blue state progressive run blue state and and blue cities like the Philadelphias of the world, not only have they lost control of the populate the bad population, and it always gets taken out on the good population. Have you noticed that? It's such a shame. the The people, some do it honestly, some do it, some do it because they're they're just ignorant. But they put these loser leaders in power, and the people that suffer are the good people. So someone in Philly, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to vote for Mayor Kenny because he's going to give my grandma a lot of money or he's going to give me money. And then his grandma ends up getting killed on the subway, the person, the voter or the voter loses their job. So some people just don't know any better because think about this. Generationally, Democrats try and have always done it and they do it through unions. They do it through propaganda. They do it through the media. They do it through schools generationally. Democrats just keep recycling the same people and the same methodology, uh, the same ideology over and over. So that's why sometimes when you ask a liberal, when you say to a liberal, why did you vote for Joe Biden? And what is the response? I'm not going to talk to you about that. I don't talk politics. You know, Trump's a big fat poopy head and he's an orange man. That's why I voted for Joe Biden. OK, so there's a level of ignorance on the left now. And people, if you don't see what's happening in your cities, you're either blind, Not, I'm not saying that in a derogative way, you're just either in your bubble or you're so rich that nothing affects you. And there are people like that. If you have a driver in security to get to work, if you work in a building where you don't have to watch your back, this will not affect you. The economy won't affect you if you are at that income level. But the majority of us are not. We're not at that level. All right, let's jump over to uh, one of my favorite people of all time. James O'Keefe, Project Veritas. Been on the show a couple times, and I love sharing this because this should be all over mainstream news media. It won't be because it, it goes against the uh, narrative. But I want you to listen to a couple things about this teacher. This teacher moved like less than 15 miles down the road. He changed his name and he started doing the same thing all over again. Now, I, I hate to say this because I'm sure we have people, we have people watching this show that have tats up their neck and this and the blue hair and stuff. But let me put it this way. And is this a sleeve tattoo or is this part of a shirt? This might be a sleeve tat. This might be a full tat. Anyway, I just have a problem with someone that looks so clownish teaching. And I know I, I don't want to get heat for that because I know there's great people with tats. I know people. I know someone that is an awesome conservative and half their face is tatted up. Their business, whatever. But when you combine this with some of the dumbass stuff that's coming out of this guy's mouth, that Project Veritas got undercover. So I want you to check this out. This is what's happening in your schools. 
and this was in August. This was just over a month ago. So this is not going away. I told you the this the what you're seeing in some cases in academia, in finance, in politics, you're seeing in some cases the last desperate breath of these leftist weasels. These people are panicking. They are panicking. So that they're not going to, you know, maybe, you know, maybe that conservative parent had a point. Maybe we should not be teaching the fifth grader how to remove their penis. That it, no, there's not going to be any backing down. The public schools will get worse before they get better because not enough people care. Burn down the entire system. The only thing that's a problem here is that uh, House Bill 1775 is returning. Um, I gave my life to vote for the end to have broadcasted two months last year. So. Yeah. Now, he says he could get his license revoked for being too woke. Now, woke is a joke. There's nothing positive about being woke, all right? Woke is an ignorant, stupid ideology. And teachers, if you are woke, shut up because you're teaching really damaging things to kids. So this whining about, well, I got fired or I can lose my license if I'm woke, well, that's because you're a propagandist and you're teaching our kids dangerous things. Like, um, eventually you want to like remove Christianity from, or uh, religion from progressive thought. And you're like, religion is higher order. So see, eventually, right, you want to remove religion from schools. The whole the entire leftist ideology, read it. It's in books everywhere. Whether it's a history book by Howard Zinn, whether it's the Communist Manifesto, whether it's this garbage from Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum and, and the Great Reset book, it's all consistent. The left needs to break down the family, eliminate it, turn the government into the keeper, get religion out of it, Reduce the ability for people to think for themselves. Get rid of discernment. That's why dissent is no longer tolerated. That's why the last place you're going to find free speech is on a, on a high school or college campus. Because that's the last shot that the government has until they take over further. Hopefully we're not going to allow that. But that's the last shot the government has its hands on your kids. Obviously, if they go to a public college or a private college, that's a whole different ball of wax. But public schools, it's a 12-year induction process. It's 12 years of training your children. There's a climate crisis. The world's going to end. Rich people are bad. We're destroying the planet. It's a 12-year induction cycle to prepare them so when they graduate, they're voting for the left. That's it. Deep inside the Sooner State in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we caught up with an eighth grade English teacher from Will Rogers High School who still prides himself on his radical activist fame on TikTok more than he does teaching the students. I have a rather large TikTok following. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an authority figure, so I'm going to give out a Christmas message of like, hey, if your parents don't love this bullshit, who do you want this Christmas with? Them. I'm your parents now. I love you. Okay. Okay. Can you imagine me saying that at an event? Me as a conservative saying that as an event. And I've talked to thousands and thousands of kids over the years with different events and was a speaker in schools and what have you. Can you imagine me saying exactly what's up on the screen here? Hey, if your parents don't love and support you for who you are this Christmas, F them. I'm your parent now. I love you. Are you? What? Okay. Now, let me point out that this asshat is on TikTok. TikTok shouldn't even be in this country because it's owned by communist China. But that's another thing 
that the advisors of, see, President Trump wanted to get rid of TikTok. But his advisors, his sellout rhino GOPers, they're afraid of communist China because too many people in the GOP are making money from communist China. But we should treat our enemies like enemies. Communist China is an enemy. They do not have our best outcomes. That's not an issue with them. So communist China runs TikTok. Why are a bunch of Americans on it in this country? It's just crazy. We've allowed the enemy into our country. But Ken, you're for free speech. I am. But communist China is not. Communist China is running a platform and you people think it's free speech? It's just like people that say, well, I do all my research on Twitter. Are you crazy? Twitter is Facebook. Facebook's a sewer. Facebook started by the government, 1998. Are you crazy? So just it, the more you rewind this idiot's uh, ascension to popularity and returning to the school system, you realize that none of this would even happen if we had politicians with balls that would say, all right, TikTok, you violated this, you violated that, you're communist China, you're killing people in communist China. Do you know how many communist China businesses are in this country right now because they were allowed by Democrat and Republican politicians? And today, somebody in a gulag, many actually, will get cut open and then they'll be selling their organs in China. How do you get Republicans to care about that? I don't think you can. I think once Republicans get to a, a level of leadership like uh, McCarthy or Mitch McConnell, I don't think they care about that or they would stop it. Drink some water. Uh, I said, yes, that is Tyler Wren. He used to be known as Tyler Parks. He used to teach at the Owasso 8th grade center until he resigned last April after these TikTok videos were highlighted by libs of TikTok. Hey, if your parents don't love and accept you for who you are this Christmas, look at them. I'm your parents now. I'm proud of you. Drink some water. I love you. Bye. So at least, at least Tyler is consistent with his message. You know, he came to, he kept, he kept the same message, did he not? He kept the same message. That's what he did. He just moved to another school. This is just a, that's a, that's a microcosm. This is an example of what's going on. Now, if you're a, if you're single and you don't have kids, you probably look at this slightly different than those of us that have kids and those of us that know our children in, in the case of my kids, both of voting age now, uh, my oldest is 21. Our kids were in that system for a long time. And, you know, shame on me for not picking up on it sooner. I started to pick up on it when my kids would come home and say, because we always, excuse me, would always engage with our kids. And one of my things was, tell me, tell me one thing that was great today and one thing that sucked today. And that would be, that was like the classic, the classic eye roll from people. I know, Dad, I know. You Okay, something that was great, something that sucked, whatever. Instead of what did you learn or what did you didn't, what, what didn't you learn? And s once we got into that sixth, seventh, eighth grade level, that's when the kids would say, we saw this movie, it's, I don't know, it was called A Truth or Weather Inconvenient. Was it the Al Gore? Inc yeah, yeah, yeah. How, you know, the... They had all these charts and graphs and we're going to be underwater. And then I, and then I, then I was like, oh my gosh, they're teaching this crap to every, this crap, even though it's been proven wrong, is being taught to everybody. That's the issue we need to worry about because we have an entire, they, the, the Democrats never give in. They never give up. That's one thing I have to give the, I have to give the communists and the Nazis credit. Hold on a second. Because they never give up. They never give up. The Nazis in America now that are in our government, that maybe the grandkids or the son or daughter of the Nazis that our government brought over and hid, uh, hid from us and lied to us, you'd be shocked at how many things we use or things in our military that were 
invented or the projects were directed by Nazis. And they still live here. There's all kinds of Nazi descendants here. And the bad part is there's people that embrace the Nazi philosophy. And you'd be shocked to see that a lot of them are on the left. But you're not allowed to talk about that. So Nazis and communists, they're like a dog on a bone. They ain't giving up. You can expose them. You can wear, you know, these awesome T-shirts. It's T-shirt Tuesday. Take down the Chinese Communist Party. Da, 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 da. Okay? But remember, it's just, it's never going to end unless enough people wake up. This means, I guess this means wake up, right? Or a magic trick? Nothing in my hands? All right. We'll be right back. That's the end of segment one. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with, uh, what do we got coming up, by the way? Oh, my gosh. I've got a whole hospital now that is uh, willing to cut up your child. Yes, totally mutilate your child. we got a great comment from Megan Kelly. It's amazing how much Megan Kelly and George Carlin have in common. I'm not kidding. And I think we're going to wrap up with a fantastic, I'm just going to have a section of it, okay? Uh, an artist, a U.S. artist who is in Russia, and he's speaking to a interpreter. And he's talking about how in America, the courts are corrupt, and some of the things they're covering up. And he hits on some topics that we've discussed on the show before, and that you're probably aware of. But that's just, that's going to be, that's a really cool slice of an interview, and I'll post it up on my, on my social. So we will be right back. And thank you, as always, for subscribing.